What's up, y'all? This is Marshall Lee with DonkeyJawProjects.com, and today is Tuesday, and this is the Working Artist Vlog. Um, yeah, how you guys doing? Uh, <clears throat> so, um, I just woke up a little while ago, and I'm finally ready to sit here and work on comics. And I just wanted to hit you guys up. I got a cool little video private video in my inbox that I'm looking forward to listening to as I draw um, from my buddy Storm with a update for Glyph and things like that um, that's kind of how we communicate together as we're collaborating and just you know we just like to chat um, so yeah um, looking forward to that uh, just check the Kickstarter for the werewolves and unicorns anthology and it is it is down to hours now. I mean, it's still technically two days. It's 67 hours, but the countdown stopped going from days on the Kickstarter to hours. So there's 67 hours left. And we're still pretty far away from getting that poster goal, um, that, that stretch goal for the poster. So um, really, if you guys could please, you know, share this thing out, share this Kickstarter. I don't care what link you share. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, please share mine and I can win the thing, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know how we're doing with that. I don't know if there's been an update. I haven't seen anything. But anyways, um, you know, um, yeah, if you guys could really share that out. And, um, you know, if you were, have been thinking about pledging and weren't sure, well, this is going to this is about your last chance now. Um, you only got a couple days left here. So um, please help us out. <laughs> we got two more stories to review um one today and one tomorrow and then we'll be done with the kickstarter and you know when it comes down to it uh, all we are is thankful and grateful you know um because you guys really came through and i mean we're you know i think we're almost at 200 percent um funded which is amazing uh, absolutely amazing and all the hard work that all of us have been put in is you know going to be rewarded with a cool awesome book so super excited about that so thank you um and yeah this morning i just gonna work on some lone wolf i'm excited to do that and uh see where the rest of the day takes me all right let's get to it all right i think i must have shown you guys the progress for this page how I finished this page um, page six of Lone Wolf for the Legends of the Lone Wolf anthology which is on Indiegogo right now definitely check that out um, <clears throat> and this is the progress I've made so far on the next page really loving it Getting that kind of creepy ghostly vibe got two more panels left on this it's funny I made a uh, I made for every one of them I made a rough layer a pencil layer and an inks layer and on this page I just went from roughs to inks so far <laughs> I don't know um, there's probably parts that might have done better if I did some pencils, but for the most part, you know, going right to inks kind of worked. I mean, in this part, I kind of went to pencils, but then I took those pencils because they were tight enough. I just took them and turned them, threw them over to the inks layer. Um, I mean, that's not the greatest hand in the world, but you get the point, and uh, I don't know. I think I'm okay with it. Um, it's not really that important of a detail. I mean, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's cool. <clears throat> I love this panel. I just did this this morning. All right, so I just read Yanimal's story. Jan Goit? I don't know how to say his last name exactly, to be honest. Um, sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm buddies with him, but for some reason, yeah. Um, anyways, his story is just so cool. Like, when when Jan attacks a page he doesn't just attack it like I gotta you know arrange some panels on a page and make a story like he attacks it like this is a like piece of illustration like it every every page is like a masterpiece and it's just like 
I don't know, like, and he does all this stuff with lettering, like, you can see the words careful there, um, in that last image where it's, like, all broken up and stuff, and he's just doing so many things, and it's kind of like, he just, he's not afraid to play around with the comic book medium, um, in a really creative way, and I don't know, it, his whole story is just, like, a feast for the eyes, and there's so much awesome little details in there, you guys gotta check it out, I just showed you a little glimpse of it, there's so much more to it, this, this, anthology is freaking awesome and i you know i'm reading all these stories and really enjoying it uh you know but i can't wait to see what it looks like in print like it's gonna be cool to see it all nice and big and in print on paper like it's gonna be so cool you guys you, you guys are in for a treat and um definitely go check that out again please share the link it's only uh you know two days left and tomorrow's going to be the last video for this i mean i'm going to keep going with the vlog but it's going to be the last video highlighting these stories so uh definitely check it out and um yeah thank you for your support uh on this kickstarter all right i think i'm going to talk about two things today because after reading jan's uh story i was just like man i kind of want to talk about uh you know using basically comics the comics medium to its fullest potential the thing is that's really cool is um you know we are working in the medium of comics and we're not working in the medium of movies we're not working in the medium of a novel we're not working in the medium of cartoons you know we're not working in the medium of tv show tv shows we are literally working in the medium of comics and the comics is a very unique medium and it's a medium that uh, is worth exploring for exactly why it's all, like like comics is awesome and stands alone on its own kind of merit and it, it's its own thing and some people will say it's the best medium i don't think any medium's the best medium they're all awesome um, in their own way but it's my favorite medium <laughs> and you know taking words and pictures and kind of marrying them together in interesting ways and using sequential panels and images i mean there's some interesting things that you can only do with comics that you can't really replicate in other mediums you can try um, and you can play around in certain ways, but it really only more works in comics. One thing that's interesting is, you know, the example of superhero comics and anything like on a fantastic level. Well, even with the CGI and stuff, I mean, now, now we're getting to a point where we can replicate some things and make it look cool on like the movie screen. But even still, there's certain things that just look awesome in comics that when you bring them over to a movie and try to do like live action, it kind of looks weird cheesy it doesn't it's just not right like it just looks goofy um you know i think about assassination classroom which is um an interesting manga and it's like the smiley face character with like you know rubbery limbs and he does like all kind of, he looks like a cartoon and they did make a live action of it and the live action from what i can see i think i just saw the preview it's really cool but it's still like it really doesn't do it justice like it works so much better in the comic like it doesn't really look so goofy in the comic as it does you know when you're trying to translate it into live action you could you know cite other you know re references as well a lot of times when they've tried to do live action and um live action of like animes or manga it, especially it really uh suffers you know and and the thing is is we have been able to do some cool things but still you're not going to be able to do it like comics can do it in you know the movie genre or any other genre or uh, medium i mean um so there's that but there's also like this aspect of like do we really use it to its full potential a lot of times we don't a lot of times we uh, create comics almost like we like storyboards or movies and you know we even use terminology like what's the camera angle well there's no cameras in comics did you know that <laughs> there's no cameras in comics um, there's no also no crying in baseball <laughs> apparently if you listen to uh, what's that movie <laughs> with the I don't know, whatever. I can't remember the name of the movie, but um, Tom Hanks is awesome. <laughs> Anyways, um, 
and so are all the other actresses and actors in that. It was a really cool movie. But anyways, um, so <laughs> now that I'm off of that train of thought, um, you know, there's no, um, what did I say? There's no something in comics. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I'm sure I'll get back to it, but you know, there's basically one thing and I haven't actually gotten the book from Scott McCloud called, I think it's called like experimenting with comics or something like that, which I, I would like to, but I almost don't need to because I, I think I know where he's going, but I still would like to get it and see, see what he's saying. But, um, the thing is, is, you know, comics are a marriage of words and pictures and, um, usually panels too. And, and like word balloons and thought bubbles. I think those are like some kind of sort of essential things that should be in a comic. And like I said, it's not meant to be like a, a lot of people are creating comics. Like it's a movie. Oh yeah. I said, there's no cameras in comics. So, um, you know, <clears throat> the thing is, is, um, I don't, I actually tend to not like the comics that kind of treat their comic like a movie because to me, I feel like all they're doing is creating a really well developed pitch for a movie and they don't really care about the form of comics. But the thing that's awesome is co in comics is, you know, you can do some crazy things with like the lettering and with like sound effects. Sound effects are so cool in comics. I've been reading um, One Punch Man and, um, it's cool because it has the Japanese, um, you know, word sound effects and the f cool effects they do is awesome. And then it'll write like next to it in a very tall, small lettering, like the English word. So you know what the word is, but, um, it's just awesome to see those effects. Like it becomes part of the world that they're in. And the only time you really see anything similar to that in like movies is like Scott Pilgrim. They, they did some interesting things where they actually you know put words on the screen and stuff and i think if you're gonna try to you know do a cool movie adaptation of a comic that might be a cool route to go like imagine if they did like a scott pilgrim style x-men or or um you know any of these properties it would be so cool like they should do that uh i look forward to the day when they they go crazy with it um battle angel alita was a great um adaptation as well but it didn't really you know, try to hit those comic-y feels. Another one is the original Hulk movie um, that came out, what, early 2000s or something? And they actually played around with the um, the screens and, like, the transitions and stuff a lot and um, the framing and everything to kind of make it look like panels and stuff. I really actually love that, and I wish they would do some more of that kind of thing in um, other movies. In fact, they kind of want to do that in my videos a little bit, but, you know, I only have so much time to edit these things. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, just the marriage of words and pictures in unique ways. I mean, there's things that, um, you know, Will Eisner did with the spirit that were really cool, especially, like, those splash pages where, you know, he integ integrated, like, the title with, uh, you know, the illustration. And it's just, it's so amazing. I mean, you think about certain people who have really pushed the genre to do things that only comics can really do and and it's awesome you can also control the pacing in really unique ways that you can't do in movies it, it's interesting because obviously you have more control it's like there's there's definitely pluses and minuses of different genres and or um i keep saying genre instead of medium um mediums like in in movies it, it feels like um the thing that really sets movies apart that makes it really awesome is um the having the soundtrack like to me that's a big part of why movies are awesome um you know being able to set the mood with sound and with music is such a great advantage and it's something that is hard to replicate in comics honestly um the only i think the way you can do it in comics is with color um and also with um tone um so you know if you don't have color you can still kind of do it with tone but it's so much easier to do it with color um so yeah sometimes i wish though that there was music to comics because that would just be cool um and there has been people who've played around with like 
kind of introducing music into the realm of comics but you know it's always kind of awkward and weird and maybe cool but like it just doesn't you know it's it's not actually part of the comic so it's never gonna really work unless you're doing like you know maybe in like the we could do that with web comics now or interactive comics and stuff like that um i'm sure there's been people who have tried to do stuff like that and um that would be cool too but then again it's it's kind of turning into a little bit of a different medium or a different version of comics you know so anyways comics are awesome on its own you don't need music you know necessarily you know there's just some really awesome things you could do with comics um yeah so the other thing i wanted to talk about is i wanted to continue a little bit with the villain thing um I was thinking about more about the villain stuff today and um you know another aspect that's interesting there's a the, a show my wife and i have been watching lately we already saw the whole series before but we're re-watching it because we just love british accents i think is the biggest thing um and especially like thick ones and all the different kinds of british accents are awesome and like scottish accents and irish accents and all that kind of stuff is really well uh it, there's a lot of that in this show shameless the uk version um i've never seen i've saw, started to watch like the first episode of the american version and i do want to see it but i can't think of it as the same as the uk because I, I just can't imagine it being as good like in the same way it's got to be good in a different way because so much of what makes Shameless good is the UK-ness of it you know it's just kind of awesome um, and crazy it's crazy it's a crazy show and, and uh, you know I certainly don't recommend it for kids um, it's definitely an adult show even though their kids are a big part of that show which is kind of crazy too um, but anyways, <laughs> in the show Shameless, I was thinking about it and I'm like, you know what's interesting about villains in the show Shameless is Shameless is kind of a show about villains. Like every character, most of the characters are villains in that show. There's not really a single hero protagonist. In fact, they even have an episode that we just watched uh, recently where it's like the, the baby... Um, the new baby was was talking like telepathically which this there's few if this might be the only place where there's any kind of supernatural anything in the show but it's kind of meant for the narrative it's meant to tell the story but it's interesting but the baby was talking to the parents telepathically and the baby said you know i'm not going to drink i'm not going to drink milk until unless you guys can find one good person in this town that we live in and they're like okay like they're trying to find a, a good person and to the point where the baby is just is probably about to die because he, he that she just didn't drink milk she refused to drink milk um and so it's just interesting how that played out like they couldn't find anybody good in in chatsworth um and it was just interesting like and, and it's it's more of a comedy then it's like a comedy slash drama show and it's just really interesting and a lot of the characters are kind of villainous to a certain extent but they're not you know they're not there is one family the Maguires, who are like they're like a gangster family you know um but even them you know there's all kinds of shades of gray of how some of them are kind of good or not so good and I guess the protagonist is probably Frank the father and he's like he's kind of detestable but he's also lovable to a certain extent and it's interesting um and he's like a drunk and he doesn't really take care of his family but at the same time he kind of does sometimes and you know it, it's just really interesting um so there's like shades of villainy and you know i was thinking about it and i'm like well how do you make somebody really people like who you really love to hate first of all there's you know giving them something to be a little bit empathetic at where you're like oh you know i i could go down that you know i could find myself in a really being a really messed up person if i went down took a, made a few wrong decisions and and maybe uh you know had had it rough in life in a certain way like some of these people did so creating empathy you know helps you to at least have some kind of identification even with a villain and that just helps your story all that much more it's like another thing 
kind of grabbing you in and making you interested in the story. Um, but also amongst villains, there's, you know, there's like honor amongst thieves, you know, that whole thing. Like when everybody's bad, can you still tell a story about with a protagonist who, you know, wins? And in that case, it's like, well, who, who is like, who even, even within a, a kind of evil circumstance or villainous circumstance or whatever, even in that situation, there are people who kind of rise above and transcend and, and, you know, maybe make some good decisions for the group, the better of the group or whatever, you know, there's all kinds of different things. And, you know, there's certain traits, you know, think about certain traits that specifically would make you kind of hate certain people, like even in your life, like one, one of the traits is hypocrisy. When you see somebody, you know, I, I could imagine like somebody talking about like, they want, you know, t saying in public, like they want to save the kids and do all these good things for the kids. Yet at home, they're beating their kids, you know? Um, so that kind of thing, you know, that, that's an easy, that's an easy one to hate, you know? Um, so there's all kinds of things like that, like people who are, who are hypocritical or, you know, people who are, um, and I, this, some of this stuff I, I've, thought I kind of watched a video recently about this too and got some stuff from them but um you know uh you know kind of people who are kind of born with like a silver spoon in their mouth and you know they are arrogant and they don't really have like they they're very privileged to the point but in the, where they're like um also cruel to people and you know they they really kind of um wave that that wand or like that that kind of privilegedness around like like nothing you know i don't know i don't know if you get what i'm saying i don't know if i'm really explaining it well but that's kind of a trait that people really don't like um in general and uh you know there's a lot of traits there's there's tons of traits for people so think about you know people who I mean, I don't want to say hate because I don't really hate anybody, but like um, people who have traits in your life that you're like, uh, that's not good. You know, that's really frustrating to even be around them. I don't want them in my life and that kind of thing. Think about those traits and put those traits in your villains, you know, and, and you'll start to create some really compelling villains. Um, so, yeah, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got a lot from that. And Hopefully uh, it's not like too many things in one video, but that's kind of the nature of a vlog sometimes. I, I do like to have like a thread in some of these vlogs where it kind of tells a little bit of a story in each one. But uh, today is a little bit all over the place with that. So hopefully you guys dig it. Hopefully you got something from it. And I will talk to you tomorrow on the last day of the Kickstarter special vlogs for werewolves and unicorns. Go check that out. Please share it. Please help help us help us get the to the uh to the poster goal all right i'll talk to you later peace out